So the worm bin overwintered just fine. I got this cardboard on the top as a skin layer. And about halfway through the winter, I'd noticed uh, there was quite a few fungus gnats in here. So I just added fresh, dry coconut coir all over the top to help soak up some of that moisture. And uh, that took care of the problem really quick. Just gonna give them a little bit more food, just some compost from the kitchen. Got some banana peels. I've got some expired bananas at the bottom. Just some peels from vegetables and uh, coffee grounds, even a paper towel. Just dump that in. And I'll just backfill this stuff in. And that's all there is to the feeding. another beautiful beautiful day in the neighborhood we got blue skies after some drizzle that we had last night and the garden is just erupting with life uh, this is one of my favorite times of year no doubt when everything starts growing back out and here's some dino kale that I grew from seed I collected in the garden we got a comfrey plant here a few flowers on there fava bean this is a wonderful variety of pomegranate. The name is wonderful. And here's a rosemary hedge that I pruned back quite heavily this year. And I'll be utilizing all the trimmings of this rosemary bush here along with some mugwort and some sage and making some incense. And here's an echinacea plant coming back as a perennial. It's been in the ground several years now. And you can see this nasturtium is starting to creep up the trunk of this fig tree here as a vining layer. Also, there's a hop vine that's made its way over to this fig tree and it started climbing up. Without me training it, it's just crawling up as a vining layer. And I just want to share with you really quick how I went about pruning my jujube trees this year. This is another tree that requires pruning, otherwise they'll get extremely tall and spread out, so you want to keep this plant under control. Basically, I was just going along with what the plant was telling me. So you can see on each side branch here, I left two nodes to push out the new growth. Here's another one over here. Getting good results. And I haven't given you an update on the bamboo in quite a while, so here it is. These are all clumping bamboos. So they won't spread out invasively into my yard or my neighbor's yard. This is a wild plum that when we moved on to this property, it was already here, it was actually just a stump. And it started re-sprouting and growing up. And now, uh, actually I've been getting fruit off this for the last couple years, and it's kind of sour, but I like it. And I wish I would have captured the blooms that were on this tree earlier, it was absolutely beautiful. But it also makes a pretty nice privacy hedge along the fence line there. Many folks might not know this, but bamboo shoots, when they first start to emerge from the ground, are edible. See over here at the end, I've got another cardoon. This was grown from one of the pups that was growing around the mother plant that I've featured many times in my videos and you can see how large and well it adapted. Now a quick design tip I want to share with you is when you're designing a polyculture, perennial based food forest type system, it can sometimes look a bit chaotic and the way you can tie that all together and create continuity is by sprinkling similar plants all throughout your entire design that color is going to pop and show up and it's going to tie everything together really nicely. So this year, and I, I do it a little different every year, I've got about 50 or so barrage plants that are sprinkled throughout the landscape. I have fava bean sprinkled throughout the landscape. I have pepper plants and ground cherries. And you'll see that repetitive theme popping up all throughout the design. Although it's a little bit hard for me to illustrate this for you at this time because everything's just starting to grow up, It'll become apparent later on as I continue to do these tours back here, so something to think about. Well, that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for watching. I want to leave you with something a little bit different at the end of this video, and that's some footage of a hike I went on yesterday with the dogs. It was an absolutely beautiful, stunning evening. Uh, just a wonderful night to get out and connect with nature, and I thought you might enjoy it. So with that, I hope this video finds you and finds you well, out in the world and out in your garden, planting more abundance in your life. Take care, everybody. I'll be talking to you again soon.
Come on. Is that beautiful or is that beautiful? Get out in nature, my friends. And every time I head out on these hikes, I bring my camera along. So you never know what you might capture. And tonight, I'm just capturing my feelings, my moment in space, my moment in time. If you can dig that. I've got my vibrams on. Oh, look, there's a deer over there. A deer or a coyote, I can't tell. I'm gonna zoom in again. That's a freaking stump. <laughs> That's a stump. <laughs> oh man. So my challenge for you today, whenever you're watching this video, is to do something today that makes you happy. Whatever it is. If it's a hike, a bike ride, a walk, go to the movies. Make an awesome dinner for yourself. Hang out with your friends. Go swimming. There you go. That's it, Happy. That a girl. Hey, rocks. What you doing over there, my boy? All right. You don't want to come into the water? All right. He prefers the dry land, doesn't he, Happy? <laughs>